One, two, one, two. Putting it on the internal mic.
Please join me in reciting the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. SSM's 35th Convocation. I have the pleasure of recognizing our dignitaries this evening. Please hold your applause until the end. When I call your name, please stand. NCSSSM Chancellor Todd Roberts, Convocation Speaker Rebecca Buck Walter Posa, Class of 2004, Vice Chancellor for Academic Programs Steve Warshaw, President of Student Government, Avi Kolkov, President of Student Senate, Daniel Wren, former NCSSM Chancellors Jerry Borman and John Frederick, Chair, NCSSM Board of Trustees Henry Quo, Class of 1982, Vice Chair, Board of Trustees Brian Bailey, Class of 1984, Board of Trustees members, Lavonia Allison, Steve Griffin, Tom Looney, Tom Williams, Foundation Board member Brad Ives, class of 1982. Thank you. opportunity to welcome everyone uh, here to Convocation this evening. Convocation begins the, the signal for the start of the school year. Uh, and I hope each of you has had a great first day of classes. Uh, I believe this is going to be uh, an outstanding 2014-15 school year. I again want to take an opportunity to thank all of our distinguished guests here this evening. Uh, and it's wonderful to have so many of uh, Rebecca's and uh, family and friends here this evening with us to, to share her speech. We're really happy that you're here. And I also want to again thank our emeritus member of our faculty who are here, members of our board of trustees, uh, our faculty and staff, uh, the former heads of school, uh, Jerry Borman and John Frederick. Thank you for being here uh, today this evening. We really appreciate you all being here. And students, I hope seeing everyone here this evening uh, helps you understand the type of community, the type of legacy that you're a part of. This evening marks NCSSM's 35th convocation. About this time in 1980, the first class of 150 juniors was here on campus, preparing for the first year of, at that time, what they weren't exactly sure, along with the faculty and staff who was also preparing for what they were not exactly sure was going to happen. But what they hoped would be uh, was a year to explore the infinite possibilities that lay ahead of them in this new idea, this new opportunity, this new school. They were looking for the infinite possibilities that the newness of NCSSM would bring to them. Fast forward 34 years and here you all sit, the 680 students from the classes in 2015 and 16. From what I understand, you are now sitting in a much more comfortable setting than those 150 students were back then. You should do a little bit of research and hear those stories. But I bet you still have some of the same feeling that the students in the class of 1982 had. You're not exactly sure what to expect, but you have hopes of the infinite possibilities that lay ahead of you this year at NCSSM. Much has changed over 34 years. Many of the people, much of the things. But what has not changed is that you are here with talented students all across North Carolina. You're here with outstanding faculty and staff. You're here with the tremendous support of our state and the many friends of our school. And as was the case for students here 34 years ago, 
you will find that these are the key ingredients to infinite possibility. I want to take this opportunity to welcome our speaker, speaker Rebecca Bumpwalter Poza back uh, to NCSSM. It's great to have you here. Thank you for making the trip uh, to be here with us. We will hear more about Rebecca's career in a few minutes, but I believe you'll be very interested in all that she has done and accomplished in her short time graduating since graduating from NCSSM. I'm looking forward to her helping inspire us as we start this school year. I think it's fantastic when we have alumni come back to NCSSM to speak to current students. It gives all of you a chance to imagine, to see yourselves and the possibilities that lay ahead of you five years from now, 10 years from now, 20 years from now. To this point in your life, you've worked very hard to achieve success and lay the foundation for your future. Every student in this auditorium has a success story to tell, or you would not be here tonight. Not all of your story is the same. You come from all over this great state of North Carolina. 85 of North Carolina's 100 counties are represented here tonight in this auditorium. And you bring with you a diversity of experiences that make you all different people. But you all share a common commitment to learning, to being successful in school, and in your desire to accept the greater challenge. And that's why you're here this evening. So again, I welcome you to our 35th convocation uh, the classes of 2015 and 16, and look forward to an outstanding school year with you. At this time, I'd like to introduce Steve Warshaw to introduce our guest speaker. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Roberts. Before I introduce Dr. Buckwald to pose it to you, I would like to let you know who the people are, her family and her friends who have joined her with us, joined with us to hear her tonight. We have Ms. Jean Buckwalter, one of her grandmothers, Ms. Paquita Posa Yunkal, another grandmother, Ms. Maureen Dunlap, her aunt, Mr. Daniel Berenson, Ms. Dunlap's partner, Ms. Shane Trutman, my friend. Mr. Juan Mai, Ms. Trutman, Mai's husband. Mr. Carl Guo, who is also here with Ms. Trutman, Mai. And finally, Ms. Ashley Knight, class of 2004, and here still a good friend of Rebecca. Please welcome them tonight. I don't know if you got to read the article about Rebecca in the Stentorium. It's quite a list of accomplishments. I'm not going to list all of those, but I do want to mention a couple of them just in case you haven't had a chance to read the article yet. She is a graduate from the class of 2004 from NCSSM. She obtained her undergraduate degree from Harvard College and her Doctor of Jurisprudence from Yale Law School. She interned in the White House Counsel's Office and completed a Civil Rights Fellowship in the Office of the U.S. Attorney for the District of Connecticut. She has a one-year federal clerkship on the Court of Appeals for the Armed Forces, the highest military court in the U.S., after which she will clerk for one year for the U.S. Court of Appeals for the First Circuit. She served as Deputy National Press Secretary at the Democratic National of the National Democratic National Committee during the 2008 presidential election and co-authored 40 More Years, How Democrats Will Rule the Next Generation. Clearly the authors thought that was going to happen. We'll see what happens. She writes on topics from religion, race, ethnicity, and sexual orientation to the Supreme Court and health care for publications including NPR, where she interned for legal affairs with, as a cor with correspondent Nina Totenberg. The Nation, The Atlantic, The Paris Review, The Daily Beast, Pacific Standard, The Huffington Post, and CNN. 
She provides political and legal commentary for national and regional radio stations and has appeared on MSNBC. She has also served on national advisory boards for Generation Progress and Advocates for Youth. She has been named one of Glamour Magazine's top 10 college women of the year, a Harry S. Truman Scholar for Public Service, and a Henry Bruce Scholar. That's in just 10 years since she graduated from Science and Math. That wasn't everything we should may know that was in the article. We are indeed fortunate to have Rebecca here tonight. Please give her a warm welcome back to NCSS. Thank you to my grandmothers, my aunt and her partner, and my friends from Science and Math in the Durham School of the Arts both who have come tonight. When Vice Chancellor Warshaw asked me if I would deliver the convocation address, my first thought was, yes. Uh, the second was, am I that old? <laughs> uh, no, of course, is the answer. Um, but I graduated from Science and Math in 2004. Uh, most of you were probably still drawing on things you should not have been. So was I. There are photos. <laughs> My dorm room walls usually had everything from molecules to timelines of Western civilization on them. Uh, on post-it notes, not on, not on the wall itself. So I'm really glad and very honored to be here. I'm also <laughs> slightly relieved. Friends who did not get to go to science and math, they're sick of hearing me talk about science and math. Not only do I get to talk about science and math today at science and math, you have to listen. So here's how this is going to go. I'll start by telling you a little about my life at, after Science and Math. In part, because that's what most tweets I receive for question. Uh, and in part, because I think you're more likely to be patient with me uh, as I tell you about things that are not directly, immediately related earlier in this speech. Then, I'll talk about my life and yours at Science and Math. Because by then, you'll be tired of listening to me and I'll have to get your attention back. Then I'll talk about your life after science and math, and you should definitely be interested in that part of this speech. Conventional wisdom is that most people in their 20s and 30s who still talk about high school are still talking about it because that's when they peaked. They were prom queen or prom king or whatever. I'm still talking about high school because science and math is the reason that whatever my peak is, it will be higher and greater than anything I could have anticipated for myself before I came here. That would be true for you too. The narrative of my life that I tell when I'm not supposed to still be talking about high school starts with college. I talk about the night that I became interested in electoral politics, about election night 2004. I went into Boston, where Secretary Kerry and Senator Edwards were supposed to be giving a victory speech. I stayed until 3 a.m. It was, of course, raining. For those of you considering college in New England, Massachusetts rain is not like North Carolina rain. It is awful. <laughs> After hearing the election results, we trudged out. And of course, I actually become interested in politics while at Science and Math but I didn't yet understand much about electoral or partisan politics. My household was not particularly political, or at least it was not liberal meaning. I was interested in policy issues, not parties, ultimately. But the election mattered to me because I realized that the types of policies and laws I really thought would be good for this country were now going to be on hold for at least another four years. What clicked for me was this. Elections are the foundation of public policy. I could study all I wanted, write as often as someone would publish me, and I didn't need much if there weren't policy makers who were willing to listen. Any of my various hallmates or teachers could tell you patience has never been my strong suit. So, immediately after the election, I wrote to a political consultant, James Carville, President Clinton's campaign manager. If you watch any political commentary, Carville is the one with the Louisiana accent you can barely understand. I still barely understand him. Why he hired an 18-year-old with no political experience remains unclear. 
It may have had something to do with the impassioned email I wrote to his office. Didn't he know Senator Kerry should never have written off the South? They lost voters in the Southwest and the Midwest for the same reasons they were losing voters in North Carolina and Virginia. It could also have been something else. His assistant later told me that she misread Harvard and thought I went to Haverford. <laughs> they never would have hired me if they knew I went to Harvard. I don't blame them. Uh, I worked that summer, after my freshman year, at a restaurant not far from me, saved money, and then took off to D.C. And then for the next three years, I split time between D.C. and Massachusetts. I got to work on campaigns in Europe and South America, Africa, which was awesome, except for the time I got malaria. <coughs> but thankfully, I had Dr. Brinson, who seems to have had and survived worse in the way of tropical diseases and parasites, so I was not too concerned. Uh, by 2008, I understood a lot more about electoral politics. And that election night, I was the Deputy National Secretary of the Democratic Party. That night, President Obama delivered the speech I'd waited four years to hear. And this time, I was very happy to be awake at 3 a.m. It helped that it was not raining. Two months later, I went back to college to finish. I applied to law school. People asked, don't you just want to do campaigns? I didn't. I got into politics because I cared about advocating for good policies and laws. Campaigns play an invaluable role in that process, but I'd rather work for and on policy directly as an advocate. So I went to law school in London. This is a story that involves a lot of luck, or what seems to be luck. I'll be the first one to tell you that there was luck involved. Carville's assistant misreading Harvard, for example. But what can often appear to be luck is actually a constellation of other factors. NCSSM isn't just one of those factors. For me, it was the main factor. If at 18 I was better prepared to strike down on my own, more willing to trust my gut than most of my peers to just write a letter and take a semester off from college, it's largely because of science and math. Just partly because it's a residential school, but a lot of people go to boarding schools. I'm not going to give you a list of reasons why these other boarding schools are not as good as NCSSM. It wouldn't be classy. It would also take too long. <laughs> I want to talk instead about the reasons science and math is fantastic, the ways that you can and should take advantage of your time here, the ways in which the school is responsible for my preparation for life after science and math. And along the way, I will also mention things about your experience here that could be difficult things that I found hard. The first draft of the speech didn't mention these things. Why would you invite someone to talk about what did not go well? Because, as extraordinary as this place is, not everything will go well for all of you all of the time. There will be rough patches, and disappointments, and drama, and betrayals. At least, I think that's how I remember high school. That might just be gossip awesome role. Uh, in any case, it's probably a good thing to start the year with a voice saying, that's okay too. So here's my advice. The challenge science and math offers is not just academic, it's personal. Can you entertain another way of thinking about something? Can you allow your own views to evolve? Can you let yourself fail and evolve from failure? I hope so. Six things to keep in mind. One, this may be the first time you're not the best at a subject. That happens. Chemistry and physics were very humbling experiences for me, as was mathematics. When Dr. Allen wrote me a letter of recommendation for college, I can only imagine she said something to the effect of, Rebecca will never be a chemist. <laughs> but really is someone worked so hard for a good grade this course. I did not see the letter, I'm just speculating. But thank you, Dr. Allen, for all of your guidance for the extra help and for that letter, whatever it said. Two, science and math may be the first time that you encounter people who have had opportunities, experiences, and advantages that you didn't know existed. When I got to Harvard, I doubted myself all the time. Among the graduates of prep schools and the musicians who trained at Juilliard and the Olympians who rode. On my first day at Yale, during our convocation, the dean asked everyone to please raise a hand if they had a parent who was a lawyer or if they had experience in the legal profession. It seemed like most hands went up. 
The good news was I had a head start on getting over it. College was not the first time that I had run into people who seemed a lot more poised and polished than I was, or had experience I couldn't or didn't have. So when you feel the temptation to be intimidated or made you jealous, hold it back. Let yourself learn from your peers. Meeting, living with, and working beside people with very different backgrounds and experiences is a very good thing. And your, experience, your opportunity to do so here is unique. When I was in science and math, being yourself and owning your experiences and achievements did not seem like a competition. No one was lording it over me that she had already taken AP Econ or he had a model of UNT. We were in it together. Others' experiences enriched my own. That would be true with your time here as long as you were committed to making it so. Three, this is one of the best opportunities you'll ever have to develop lasting, meaningful friendships. The friendships I developed here have lasted more than a decade, mostly because of, sometimes despite, bonding experiences on campus. Like the snowstorm that resulted in half the school trying to sled down the hill in a subsequent trip to the ER. The friend who ended up in the hospital loves this story, by the way. She says, like it's the sweetest thing ever, you let me bleed all over your coat. <laughs> My friend made it, the coat did. I told her that I probably shouldn't tell that story today. She said there's nothing wrong with that story. Sledding is harmless. It's not like we planned to break my nose. On another memorable occasion, a friend on third, Brian, announced she would like bangs. She was recruiting someone to cut her hair. I became convinced that internet instructions for cutting hair were infallible. How hard could that be? Hard. The result was suboptimal. Fortunately, due to the strength of our friendship as established in Science and Math, she forgave me almost immediately. She did say, however, now we know why you didn't get into the Harvard School of Cosmetology. <laughs> there. Uh, we bonded over all sorts of things. We had a series of power outages, and everyone worked in the hallway together to get things done. We had all-wide dance parties, in which I was allowed to participate despite not being able to dance. Very kind. Um, I remember we went to 9th Street to get nose piercings after we turned 18. <laughs> These are memories, not suggestions. <laughs> the Chancellor and Vice Chancellor will truly regret inviting me if you all go break or pierce your noses. Four, because you have become, or will become, a much more tightly knit community than other high schools, you have a much greater opportunity to make a difference in your friends' lives and in yours. I asked one of my best friends to share her favorite science and math memories. One was the day she came out to me. Because of where she's from and the experiences that she had, she was really worried about it. Then she said, I told you, and you acted like it was totally normal. She felt safe and accepted. I am grateful that that was something that I could give her. And in return, her support made my own process of coming out years later much easier. It may be that here you will face decisions and situations others don't face until adulthood. I did. You may encounter peers who struggle with depression or eating disorders or addiction or you may experience these things. I hope you don't face any of these things, but you could. I'm grateful to have faced these things in an environment in which there are people and resources available to help. I can't urge you enough to take advantage of the support available. And with these challenges and others, youth is an advantage. That means that the decisions you make and the actions you take to help others here may have greater meaning and consequence than at any other juncture in your lives. Five, appreciate that these are some of the best, most involved teachers you'll ever have. Not only are your teachers more impressive, more qualified than any other set of teachers, they're more dedicated. Dr. Egalis helped me prepare for the AP US History exam on her own time. Dr. Morrison, who never actually had me as a student, adopted me anyway. I've gotten messages from him on several planets. My inept his teacher was the one to teach me how to pick out a prom dress. Halter neck, not strapless. If only I had listened. 
And when I got sick in my senior year, teachers found a way to help me get through. Teachers here come in early and stay late. They read academic work line by line. They read college essays line by line. That doesn't happen most places, not in high school or ever. Teachers here are overall more open to and interested in forming mentoring relationships than anywhere I've ever been. I benefited from that enormously. You can too. Six, take the chance to fail and learn how to move on. One of the reasons I was surprised to be invited back to science and math is that I was not really a model student. I broke a lot of rules. A few were literal rules, actual rules. Teachers, administrators, SLIs, I'm very sorry. More often, I just did things a little differently. Sometimes because I didn't know better. Sometimes because I was stubborn. But often in a good way, because I was in an environment where instructors reinforced the idea that testing limits and exploring boundaries, that was a good thing. Succeeding in science and math is not about being perfect. It's often about being willing to be imperfect. If you don't understand, ask the question. Admit your limits. You'll have to hit your limits to push past them. In general, just be willing to try, even if you're not sure if you'll succeed. In whatever your path, you'll be better off for that willingness. When you open yourself to the many new experiences you can have here, you gain the opportunity to find what one teacher calls a place of grace, your sense of self, your core, that will carry you forward. And here's my advice for after science and math. When you leave science and math equipped with all of these advantages, be yourself. Usually people just say, be yourself, and expect that phrase to self-execute. It's more complicated than that. So I have some more specific advice. Please, please do not exaggerate or lie. You will be tempted. A lot of people do it in little ways and big ways. The obvious reason not to do so is this, it's wrong. But you're also setting yourself up for a fall. You could get caught during an interview process. I know of a woman who sits on a scholarship panel who speaks this. It is among her favorite hobbies, and one of her favorite hobbies, I think, to test applicants on languages they claim to be fluent in. This has happened to me. Not failing, but being tested. If you're not found out in an interview, you could get caught later. Most of the time, this is the best reason not to be tempted into being inauthentic. Your best asset is authenticity. If you begin from a foundation of insincerity or insecurity, You've thrown that away already. The other piece to being yourself is this. Trust yourself. Don't ask, why me? Ask, why not me? Many of the choices I made along the way seemed risky. What if the Carville internship didn't work out? What if I lost my job after leaving school for the campaign? In part because of science and math, I was confident enough to take calculated risks. And I was confident that I was up to the opportunities that I was given. John Updike said, four years was enough at Harvard. I still had a lot to learn, but I had been given the liberating notion that I could now teach myself. Whether you go to Harvard or UNC, Haverford or NC State, you go already having been liberated in this way. At NCSSM, you learn how to learn. All of the advantages, all of the perks of science and math, learning from classmates, building relationships with teachers, becoming more confident, these require keeping an open mind. So does the challenge that comes after. Your generation is going to see, face a series of false dualisms. In fact, it's already started. In politics, it's red and blue. In policy, it's idealist and pragmatist. Academia has theory and practice. It's minorities' rights by race or ethnicity or religion or gender or sexual orientation instead of just human rights. And these all boil down to us and them. The challenges that we face across local, state, and national borders differ in the details. But the crises of these past few years, from economics to epidemics, have demonstrated how tightly linked our lives are becoming. Your education in science and math will help you begin to think more broadly about your lives and those of others, about your capabilities and those of others, and to recognize the connections among us. It's important that you embrace this opportunity to expand academic and personal horizons because there is no them, 
there is only us, communities from local to global, they can only succeed in fighting challenges through a willingness to work together. Look at what's happening in Ferguson, Missouri. We're seeing a clear example of what happens when there isn't an effort to connect, to understand, to think about a greater community. What's happening is very much about a false dualism of us and them. It's a failure to see that we're all part of the same people, the same American people, the same rights, shared experiences. It's critical that you begin thinking about how to approach and handle these issues because soon it will be your generation, the class of 2015, the class of 2016, that has to address them. In the meantime, over this year or two, be grateful, be proud. Remember that it is okay to keep talking about where you went to high school when you went to a high school as amazing as science and math. Thank you for making me part of this day. Best of luck. Dr. Barbara I think your, your story is an incredible example of the diversity of opportunity that is available, and, and opportunity and experience that is available to all of us here at NC Center. So, distinguished faculty, guests, and students, it is my honor to welcome you here to the beginning of another unique and extraordinary year. So, good afternoon and congratulations to all of you, juniors, for your acceptance and conquering of the essential first steps on each of your journeys that will truly come to be the greatest challenge that is the North Carolina School of Science and Mathematics. And to the seniors, welcome to round two. For you, this convocation represents the beginning of an end to your two years here at NCSM and to the 12 years from kindergarten to college. Now, all of us have a long school year ahead of us, filled with momentous achievements, arduous tasks, and most importantly, memories to last a lifetime. But before we spring head first onto the road ahead, here are a few things that I hope we'll all keep in mind. I know many of you have made it here by virtue of your competitive spirits and individual ambitions, but if there's one thing I've learned after a year of housekeeping, work service, American studies, and living on the fourth floor, it's that no characteristic embodies the NCSM community better than the spirit of collaboration. While built on a strong academic foundation, NCSM is sustained by the resilience of its unity and the camaraderie of all students the athletes, student scientists, musicians, programmers, painters, and mathematicians. This last year has taught me that oftentimes your greatest asset comes not from within yourself, but from those around you. Always remember that, just as Dumbledore said of Hogwarts, here at NCSM, help will always be given to those who ask for it. While most of us probably won't ever, ever have the same hat or long white beard, well, at least maybe not until the end of No Shade in November, <laughs> rest assured that your peers will offer you the wisest of advice and be the ones that tell you that you can, even when all others tell you that you can't. From the long conversations with your counselor and late night tutorial sessions with your chemistry teacher, to the anti-failing American studies Facebook groups, to the friend's shoulder you cry on after that impossible physics test. You'll find yourself, like myself at the moment, with so many people to thank individually for your success. Don't get me wrong, this is not the time to grow dependent, but rather to utilize the invaluable resources around you as a foundation and a base that will allow you to reach higher and see further than you could ever on your own. Never rest on your laurels, but continue to strive to achieve in the same spirit that led you here today. In clicking I accept this April, you not only accepted entrance to one of the most prestigious schools in the country, but also accepted ownership of your success. Whatever your calling, NC STEM will be to you exactly what you make it. So I challenge you today to make it the absolute best that you deserve by pursuing all of your intellectual and personal curiosities. 
to take that self-defense class, to sign up for all of those clubs before finding your true passion, or to follow up on that crazy idea for something like making colored parafilm or getting money for solar panels around campus. As you continue your journey at Science and Math, don't forget that inspiration can come from just about anywhere. In fact, it was Kanye West that taught me the final reminder I have for you all today. We all know our goals in life, our ambitions, our destination, the figure of light at the end of the tunnel. But just like streetlights on a highway, shining moments in life pass us by endlessly. It's easy to see life as a constant race that requires speed, endurance, and endless competition to edge, edge ahead of those next to you. But treat NCSM like such a marathon with college at the finish line and you'll find yourself burnt out before getting there. So remember that the journey is just as important as, if not more than, the end itself. Never forget the shining lights, the late, night with your, the late nights with your friends, shivering through happy half in the middle of the winter just because, or sprinting down 9th Street to beat the sunset. <laughs> we'll encounter some of the biggest challenges of our lives during our time here, like trimester exams, college applications, and well, food, and upsetting. <laughs> even in the middle of the second try, when work and sleep become mutually exclusive, or when breakfast or even lunch doesn't make the cut for things that you think you have time for, don't ever give up. Know that your darkest times will not define you because you struggled, but because you made it through. Along with 679 of North Carolina's best to light the way to the end, the streetlights. No matter how many APs you take or how well you do on your SAT, you'll leave here with an experience to last of a lifetime. Something that can never be taken away and will often take you further than any number on a resume will. So make the best of your time here. Remember what you learned from your teachers, your friends, and yourself. Let's make it a great year. Thank you. Professional. Thank you to Abby for your words as well. Uh, I really appreciated those. One of the things that always amazes me, uh, in uh, I guess now after four years being here, it shouldn't. Um, when you hear alumni, whether they're class of '82 and the class of 2004, or Abby, who's the class of 2015, and they talk about their experiences. There's so much in common, uh, and that's uh, something to be proud about as an institution after 34 years that we can say that. I also want to thank our uh, honored guests who are here this evening for being with us to share the 35th Convocation at NCSSM. To all of our faculty and staff who uh, every day, as you can hear from what Rebecca had to say, uh, do things that make this place what it is for all of you that are here. Thank you for getting the school year off to a great start. And all the members of the classes of 2015 and 16, thank you for being here and accepting the greater challenge and continuing the tradition of excellence that is the North Carolina School of Science and Math that you've heard some of this evening. The start of the school year is always filled with great excitement and with possibilities that come with starting anything new. So as you experience, learn, wrestle with, enjoy all that lies ahead of you this year, I want you to remember what got you here. Your commitment to learning, your motivation, and your drive to challenge yourself to your highest ability and beyond. At NCSSM, as has been said earlier, you will have greater educational opportunities, greater challenges than ever before. Every one of you has the talent and ability to be as successful here as you have been throughout your entire school, all of your education to this point. I want, to know, I want you to know you will have the support of every member of our faculty and staff, and that you will not find anywhere a better or more committed group of professionals than you will here. You'll have the support of the alumni who have come before you and who, give, and who each, year, each year give back to the school of their time, their talents, and their treasure so that you will have better opportunities than they had when they were in science and math. However, with all of the support you will have at NCSSM, it is your commitment to being successful that is most important 
more so than anything else. So as we begin the 2014-15 school year, remember, this year is yours for the challenges it will present, yours for the learning it will offer, and yours for the infinite possibilities before you. I look forward to working with each of you this year and to your great success. I hope everyone after we recess will enjoy uh, joining us on the Brian Long for reception and an opportunity to talk with our speaker and others. So again, as we start the 2014-15 school year, have a great year and I wish you all the success in the world. Thank you.